Too what is the heaviest you have ever loaded an RDL? Probably 200 kilos. The heaviest I've ever loaded an RDL snatch grip is in that neighborhood. Really? Yeah. 180? Yeah. 180 snatch grip RDL. I tried it. How many reps? I think I hit it for five, and I paid the price for weeks. I think I wanted to flex on someone yeah. who didn't even know I was trying to flex on them. Yeah. I think they just said you couldn't do it, and I was like, all right, watch me. Ego. <laughs> nice. I like it. Um, welcome to the Garage Strength Podcast. I got Tamon with me again. Uh, Dane Worlds, right? Yeah. Two different two different worlds. Worlds. Well, Honest, yeah, it's kind of weird. Discus and weightlifting, weightlifting right? Now, yeah. So T's doing the sub. You know, he's trusted as the head trainer down there. He knows what he's talking about a with lifting bit. weights. A little bit, a right? Little bit, a little yeah. bit, a little bit. But knows. Um, but very accomplished shot putter has a problem he throws shot in america so so it's tough yeah. to go represent on a world team because the top the dogs, top are, dogs really, are really really good <laughs> really good um uh, something fell out of my pocket if you heard that it's just my keys don't, don't worry. and then um t there's me my name's earl you are i don't know no one knows why i'm here except for the people that are here um i write books co-author books with dane around the training system help out top with top level co-author though yeah like thank you i appreciate it um what else do i do help with uh scripting things yeah a lot of the writing things if there's words involved i tend to be around somewhere You're around that yeah um, you clean 300 pounds for a double. It for was a for, double. It was for a double. And that doesn't matter. It's the whole <laughs> fact that I did it for a double at 40 years old. Yes. Like I did I it for. I wanted to throw that in there. Yeah. I think that's important. 40 years old. And I think I added too. This is before. Because Tama wants two athlete days since he loves doing hurdle hops and box jumps so much. Really I was important. telling him how I can. Like I'll do like 36 inch hurdle hops still at 40. And when I was only a wee bit younger. Like I was still a master's athlete. I could do my best athlete day ever. I got three 42 inch hurdle hops in a row. It, I wouldn't say it was like boom and go. Like I definitely needed to like muster up and go. Okay. That's fine though. You still did it. 42 but inches it, is high. Doing it three times. Like I was impressed with myself. Like I, I gave myself an attaboy. And then after that, I was like, why are you working so hard? Like you could still jump high with 30 inches. Yeah. Like you don't, need your hips like your knees just touching your nose type yeah, of thing to get over it's not necessarily um the most important thing yeah so get the peak strength app if you don't have that just putting that out there athlete days on there it's athlete eight. days on there at least one of them was on there what's it like training athlete day as a shot putter because we are talking about how to get strong without squatting and athlete day definitely is a way to get strong without squatting yes um as a shot putter doing athlete day it's interesting, but it's fun. I like to compare it to like in high school as a football player. And so, what it, position did you play? I played. I played a lot of positions. What position did you play? Center was my main position. I was gonna say you look like a center. I was a pretty good center. I was really good. I would think you'd be tough at center. Yeah, I was. I was pretty tough. I was nice. Like, t- was, how tall are you? Depends on the day. How tall are you on your tallest day? Six feet I and did. a half. I thought you were taller than that. I thought so too. I would have gave you six two and not have questioned you at all. Okay, I'm six two then. All right. My huddle profile said six two, but I mean, okay, that doesn't mean anything until they see you in person. And you played in Texas too, right? I did so play in Texas. like it was six a an... highest level. In oh Texas. wow. Yeah. Was your team any good? I we were okay. Like one year I was really good, or we were really good, and then like we were pretty bad, and then we were like moderately good. So what made you like pretty good? Did you have like a stud? Like we had a, a running back that was legit. Like twenty five hard twenty five hundred yard running back. Did he go play SEC? He was getting recruited by everybody. Did he? Go, he didn't have the he, grades, unfortunately. Oh, so he had to go JUCO. But he was legit. That's pretty super cool. fast. Broke tackles. Juked anybody. He was good. This is gonna be a silly question, and I don't know. With like all the nail deals now, yeah. do you need the grades anymore? No, I don't think so. Like, if you're good, like if you have an image. And you are a decent athlete, and you go to a big time school. Yeah. Do you really? The grades are important, sure, but like, 
if you're a football player, in three years you're going to the league anyway. Yeah. Like, or you might stay because I heard sometimes these college kids are getting more money than they were pros signing. Are. So yeah, so it's like good for them. It's it's really good. I think it's funny because it's like you look back. I don't know if you watched the Johnny Football. Um, Is it on like on Netflix? Netflix? Yeah. I don't have it. I, you don't have Netflix? Nah, I kind of only. What are you living under a rock, dude? Like, all right. So I'm an early adapter of like cut the cable. Like I was okay. just all streaming. Yeah. Like decade plus now. However long it like you cut the cable for over a decade. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Where like entered normie culture type thing, like more mainstream type of stuff. Yeah. Um, and now I'm like almost exclusively like I'll just watch YouTube. Like it. And you can get a lot of stuff on YouTube. It's just it's, like this podcast. Yes, it's <laughs> just more fun for me. Okay, I like that. But yeah, nil is it's crazy, cool. And I also, this may be sacrilege. I think watching sports, if it, you're not live there, is some of the most boring thing and an absolute waste of my time. Sometimes I said it. I'm sorry. Like, I I can't watch a football game on TV. I can't do it. I get so bored. It's so slow. A football game is slow? Yep, so slow. I'd rather watch baseball. I think it's more exciting. There's more explosive movements that happen on a quicker timetable between the and the anticipation of a hit and the dynamic of having to watch the infield react is so tense. It's just like way above. And then I'd even prefer like a game like soccer because there's constant movement. There's not a single commercial going on. And you just constantly get to watch the game. And as you learn the game more, you can see the little nuances to make it more exciting instead of just like, oh, they're just kicking the ball around. No one scores. It's like you don't need to score to see excitement yeah. and see like potential and possibility. It's just what I'm saying. Sorry. Whatever. I hope everyone's triggered about it. That's interesting. Like even you, you were like ready to. I was me. ready to jump on you, but you, I was like, you I, jump. When, when, you, when you explained everything, I do get it. Yeah. Like it makes sense in terms of like. The reactions of everything. Like I was watching, I forgot where I was at. I was watching, I think, the Mariners play. Uh -huh. They had a double play, and I, you could see like the uh, second baseman's no shortstop's face, like how focused he was to make sure he like tagged the bag, kind of jumped over the guy to make sure like he didn't get ran over, yeah. or slid into, and then like made a play to first. Like it is hard. It is, and it's respectable. You know, I can respect the work that they have to do. But to say it's more exciting than football, mm, I'm a little, I, I have to, I can't really argue with you on that one. That's your opinion and perspective. Yeah, well, so. what excitement like is, it. like, there's, it's more delayed gratification through baseball. Okay, I see. Football's sure. like, you can just be a hard worker. It's like three yards here, four yards there. Oh, first yeah. down, let's start again. Same thing. Like, But you never know what's next. You never know what's coming. Yeah. Same thing with baseball. Baseball, I feel you can get dragged along, like, I'm curious, what percentage of football plays end up with a first down? Or, like, drives? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how, how many, many drives a game? Yeah, get a first down. Like, yeah. I bet that percentage is higher than um, hits in baseball. Because think about it. If you, if a hitter is successful 33% of the time, they're a Hall of Famer. Yeah. That's insane. Imagine if only one of every three throws you had had to be in and you could be in the Hall of Fame. Like, wasn't a foul. I mean, that literally encompasses the thrower thought of, like, it only takes one. Yeah. See. But and you could be a Hall of Fame. You, you just have to champion. hit dingers, though. Yeah. Right? You have to hit straight dongs for it to, like, <laughs> be a Hall of you Fame. Hang it. <laughs> so, that's fun. All right. Let's talk about strength in the legs let's without squatting. We're getting off topic. I know. That was a lot of baseball, Whatever. football. We're talking sports. I'll take credit or for distracting us. <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. All right. We were talking about athlete day. Yes. You were Before this all started, we were talking about doing it too. Plyometrics is a way to get your legs strong without yes. squatting, right? Yes. It's all about the high threshold motor unit recruitment. Ooh, big words. It's a lot of big words. Yeah. HTMU recruitment. Yeah. Um, so it's just like... You doing those high intensity movements force your body to contract and recruit a lot of muscle fibers to move your body weight in space. And that has to be intense and high and aggressive and intentional for you to actually accomplish that. So that is one way to get strong because you're doing it over and over and over again and repeated. So it's like 
the more you do that, the more consistent you are, the more coordinated you are with those movements, essentially the stronger you will get because you're able to hit those contractions faster. So I read somewhere, I think it was in a book. I think it was in a book. I actually think I sent you a screenshot of the book too. I think that was about like impulse and stuff like that. Yeah, I think you did. And I believe there's a comment in that book that the forces generated through plyometrics, it Mm -hmm. it could be, it could be somewhere else are higher than the forces generated when you lift weights. It's possible. Definitely is. Just because I mean, all when you land from a plyometric movement, all the force going into the ground is super high because you're taking on your load of your body weight, gravity, whatever distance you're traveling, acceleration of the every, you know, the acceleration of the way 9. down, nine point eight meters per second yes. squared or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, is that physics? Something. Yes. <laughs> so it's like you have to take on all of that and the newtons and all the force being the comp like accumulated is super high versus like doing a heavy back squat like yeah you're applying a lot of force from the ground into the bar and standing up but it's not it's almost like a gradual build up of force where yeah. it's like plyometrics it's like it has to be done right now and then to jump too you have to the force to how decelerate accelerate the mass of your body yes fight against gravity and see where you end up yes and then it's also i think just like being coordinated to get over if it's a hurdle or getting onto a box or stair jumps or any other like obstacle you have to overcome like you have to actually think about that to one to do it and then get your body to apply the necessary force to complete it like you're gonna get strong doing those things how much dynamic trunk control do you need to get your knees up to clear the hurdle a lot a lot i i think it's like when you see someone doing a short hurdle a lot like if you look and watch them land and they land with their chest always forward that's because that's the way of like compensating because they can't get their knees up so they try to go out instead of going up and up will require you to bring your knees up as well and so it's like you need your hip flexors you need all the psoas the abs all those muscles to dynamically control yeah for you to get your knees up so you can keep your your trunk upright when you land that way you can keep what happens if like uh the series i see a lot like high hurdle low hurdle high hurdle low yeah yeah what happens if they start like sort of landing like almost backwards you get what i'm saying like where their trunk gets behind their hips a little bit feet go forward yeah almost, and they're like their butt's about to hit the hurdle yeah yeah yeah. Like, yeah big i do that all the time sometimes but it's like because you think of going up so much but then you ha- you have to have some sort of horizontal movement too so you can't just go straight up bring your knees up because then you won't go anywhere and then you're like, oh, wait, I got an obstacle and I have to jump over. So you kind of like limbo the. You, yeah, <laughs> you like throw your feet forward and like hope you get over the hurdle without like hitting your butt and then the hurdle falling forward. Yeah, I think that's part of That's just like a more of a coordination almost. And then you land and it's like, uh, how do, oh, we, how do I Thankfully, now? it's like a small hurdle or yeah, something. Yeah, so you can just kind of like get over it. But then it's like now you have to try to set yourself back up to then get back over the big hurdle. Yeah. Like, it's almost like if you do that once, it could throw off the rest of the hurdle. So you almost want to hope it's like the last hurdle you yeah, do it on. Jump series are for real. Like you need athleticism. Like yes, I, w- I always laugh when they they use the B roll like uh, Singleton doing the stuff, and you're like, oh, that doesn't look so bad. And then like maybe you go try it or something like that, and you're like, what was I thinking? Yeah, like- this is completely <laughs> different. That guy's different. And then even doing the movement itself, that's different. Like you have to, yeah. if you don't train in a way of doing something like that, where you have to go fast and explosive, like. It's or even like really the hard. videos of Jan doing all this stuff. Oh, too. Like, like jump series and all those things. Yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy. All right. So leg strength without squat. And we got some plyos here. Yep. Do you, do you want to say some like creme de la creme plyometric movements like that are. That are going to get you strong. Yeah. Come on, you got to spit it out. This is a talking one. You can't have downtime. I know, I can't have downtime. Anything, that, I mean, if you're doing like a, a box jump or a depth drop, Yeah. depth drop to a box jump, depth drop to hurdle hop, Um, I think just bounds in general, Uh huh. going for distance on bounds, like, you know, three uh, triple jump broads. If someone had to buy one piece of equipment to make their athlete day or like their plyometrics more like better, I don't their know. Plyos was, better. What would you buy? Probably a hurdle. All right. Mini hurdle or high hurdle? Mm, high hurdle. How many of them would you buy? Four. Four? So 100%. if you had four high hurdles, like you're golden. 
Yeah, I think you're fine. Would if you could? I don't, I'm trying to think. So you want the high hurdles over the mini? Yes. What would be even better? Could you get like something that's like adjustable? Yeah, I was gonna say the next one would be adjustable hurdles. So we actually just kind of inside. We put, we're trying to get some adjustable hurdles that go from six inches to forty two inches. Oh, I got and I, some of those. You got some of those. Yeah. Smart move. So it's like you can do your quick plyometric stuff, more impulse like. But you're going quick over the hurdles really fast you can do uh-huh. it in different different areas or different planes of motion or whatever but then the high hurdles is like now we're getting forced into the ground we got to get up get over and then try to make those rebounding and fast and so i would say the high hurdles if you want to get stronger as well as improving your overall plyometric All ability right. so but high hurdles definitely plyometrics everyone stronger legs without squatting yep and I want to make this caveat. We are not saying don't squat. Yes. <laughs> We're not saying that. <laughs> Definitely squat. Like, it's yes. a given. Just, you know, maybe, though, you run into some limitation at some point in training yeah. that it can't happen. Or yeah. you just need alternatives. You Like, hey, this is how to do it. Yeah. So where do you want to go next? Do you want to go into, like, accessory movements? Do you want to go maybe something not thinking of to get strong legs i think this one's different all right i might have talked about this one off air a little bit let me hear about Um, this i think sprinting okay some sort of so speed work speed work yes let's talk about speed work getting strong legs without squat and doing speed work i think it's very similar to plyometrics because you're doing something that's high threshold motor unit like you got to move fast and so i've noticed this was an experiment i tried five years ago um doing hills Hill sprints, like, I think twice a week. For, were you running them? I ran hill sprints, yeah. So was it, you were the, the lab rat. I was the lab rat. You were experimenting on and yourself. I was, so I tried it. I was like, okay, I'm going to do hill sprints twice a week. You know, I change the, the rest time up every now and then. What was the distance you'd run up the hill? Like it was like 25 yards. All right. So it wasn't crazy far. Yeah. But, Nothing, but it was like on a the fairly gr- steep hill. Yeah, depending on the grade of the hill, that yeah. can be vicious. Yeah, it started, it was like really steep and really high grade, and then it slowly started to level out a little bit, but it was still like, you're still going uphill. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to do this twice a week and see if I go when I do like leg movements or any like a clean or a you know, squat or anything like that, like does it feel different? And it did feel, those movements felt stronger. Okay, so when you say stronger – what is something as the athlete like that makes it feel stronger? Like, does the bar move faster? Does it like it just feels like when you go to stand up, it goes up? Yes, when you go to stand up, it goes up. I think the pull off the ground felt stronger on a okay. clean or a snatch. Um, any type of lunge or single leg motion, like a jerk, a recovery of a jerk, or landing of a jerk, landing and planting both those feet into the ground felt way stronger and okay. way easier just because you're in that split position. Same thing you're driving off on a hill. I think you get this. That's almost the same aspect because you have to steadily push each step to get up the hill. And so when you land on the jerk, boom, those feet land. It's just more, there's more stability there. Um, what else? Can you do sprints without the hill? 100%. On, on just flat land? Yeah, like sprints. I'm just, I'm going to the local high school. Yeah. They have the gates open. I'm going to go use the track. Go use the track. Yeah. Everyone on the outside, you know, running their laps, walking or whatever, you, talking yeah. to their friend. Yeah. I can go stand down at the hundred meter line and like, and just go and sprint. Yes. So it's all doing something. We're in that zero to 15 second time frame. you know, using a lot of ATP PCR system. Like you're using those high threshold motor units. Like we talked about earlier, uh-huh. you have to apply force at a rapid rate. You're going to get strong. Your legs are going to be get very strong off of that because you're steadily applying high amounts of force over and over and over again. Now, how do I not get hurt? Cause I will tell you this and Dane was making fun of me. I was, I started deciding like, I'm going to start doing like speed work. I'm going to go sprint. Like I'm going to do it without fail. I would get something to tweak every time I tried to like max effort sprint. And I don't know, maybe I'm just old and I I don't know why. (laughs) Like I'd go to go and like something in my hamstring, like an adduct, an abductor would just adductor would act up. And I'd be like, why? Like, and like I'm warmed up. This is the 11th rep of it. Like yeah. there's no reason that should, be, should happening. be getting hurt. Sometimes I think that's just doing things. You know, if you're not used to doing those explosive movements on a consistent basis, that mm-hmm. plays an issue. Um, but also I think if you go, you know, so how do we word this? 
if you're doing some sort of you're sprinting and you, you have to start at a lower intensity or lower distance do buildups okay you know i think that's a big one is a lot of people try to go straight off the line and go right away but your body's not used to going from zero to 100 that fast you have to go into a buildup so like maybe so you're like, telling me i was too strong off you the might start. have been too that, strong to apply you. all that force yeah. right away you know <laughs> that, that's really that's what it sounds like here right. it's like you're just like <laughs> Freaky strong, you know? Not really, but still, I appreciate it. We'll Thank go you. With that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like doing like a build up or a flying sprint or something like that to try to get your body used to going from that slower rate to fast and then slowly slowing down, not trying to like put the brakes on too quickly. That kind of gets your body, builds it up a little bit of a, you know, almost like a shell in a sense. So if I'm hearing you right, if I was like programming speed work, Cause I'm not going to squat to get strong right now, but yeah. I can still run fast. Yeah. I might benefit from doing hill sprints. Mm -hmm. I could benefit from doing normal sprints. Yep. And I should probably, if I'm like setting up a rep scheme, yes. if you will, especially if you're someone who like older, like me, yes. Start or even younger too. Oh yeah. Younger as well. Start with sort of a progressive movement yes where the intensity builds and you call them what fly sprint yeah flying sprints flying sprints yeah before getting into like maybe an all-out effort start or yeah. something of that nature yeah yeah like you don't you don't want to go out there and let's test my 40 and i haven't you know ran or yeah. done anything in months or years you know you want to slowly build into that so that's where i think doing just simple drills and stuff like that like you know a skips b skips skips for height little things like that trying to go as high as you can is that speed work or is that plyometric work I think it's like a bridge. Okay. I think it's a bridge. It's it's hard to say like you're doing the concepts that's going to improve your speed work, but you're also doing things that are like quick for plyometric style things too. Uh -huh. So it's like, it's like a it teeters back and forth between both of them. Anything else you want to say about sprinting and speed work? I think that's a big one right about there. getting stronger yeah, legs, just stronger legs. That. Like you're going to, you're going to get strong because you're moving fast and you're moving your body fast. So, you, so. so a good way for like, eight to 12 year old who isn't quite hitting the weights yet or yeah. doesn't have a coach comfortable yes. to like take you on mm -hmm. um, and do it safely and that's go. a perfect way yeah that's a great way you teach a kid how to run yeah you teach him how to sprint they're eventually they're gonna one get coordinated or just jump to or just jump. jump up those steps kid. yeah and see how fast you can do it and see how you land see yeah your body coordination you learn how to do those movements those are just simple movements right you do them early on the next thing you would need is to get stronger to get stronger then and lifting weights will then help those movements. So now you have a base, you know, you have that base uh -huh. you know, set. And so I think once you do that, now you can get that kid to go from instead of essentially you're trying to teach them everything at once. They already have that base of just bodily coordination and movements. Yeah. That's sprinting and jumping. And then it's, you put strength on top of that. Now you turn them into a whole different beast. All right. So we get them doing that, right? Mm -hmm. We can do speed work. Plyometrics we talked about. Let's talk about lifting, but we're not squatting. We can't squat. Can't squat. What are we going to to strengthen the legs? Like, what what exercises are you putting in their program? Like, we can't squat at all. We're no back squat or no squats. We're not front squatting. Uh, yeah. Let's say can't no goblet squats. No, we're not squatting. Like no bilateral squatting. Yeah, we're not going. No, we're not even single leg. No single leg, no unilateral squatting at yeah, all. Yeah, like especially if it's called yeah, it's called a squat. We maybe we could get away with a lunge. Maybe the lunge was, is that okay. was gonna be my next thing. Like, maybe the lunge is okay. Can I count a lunge? Yeah. I'm like a lunge or a step up. Definitely a step up. I think you could definitely do the step up. I think if you do a step up, one you can go super heavy. Well, yeah, you can't really go heavy because we're not putting those we're not well you can. You can. You can. You go like a lower step. On a step up, how low? Twelve inches. Twelve inches, and you any can, lower than that, it's uh, yeah. Like a, I don't know if you. you it doesn't quite it. work. It doesn't work, but you do twelve inches. I wish like, I had a twelve inch box just to like go heavy in a movement yeah. like that. You can lower the step up up. That's like some. You can go heavy on those. So like you do step ups, five or six reps, or like even higher, like twelve reps, like uh -huh. and you just like keep that foot on there, and you just slowly bring the other foot on top every time. But you're always pushing off the top leg, like. That's I remember time strength work. Dane had moments where he started doing like high box step ups. Yes. And timed eccentrics on them then too. It yeah, was, yeah. It was just you're like, this is my accessory movement. Why is it so brutal? Yeah. I think doing <laughs> step downs. Okay. Slow eccentric step downs. And I, I like to do them 
when I have athletes do it, like if we can't do a squad or, you know, the, the pattern isn't fully there yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to teach them how to, I'm still working on like hip hinge patterns and trying to get their strength up without just lowering the bar on their back is like, we'll do like a goblet lateral step down. And so okay. standing on the, on a box, you know, you're on the edge of the box and you're slowly, you're keeping that foot on the box essentially. And you're just slowly lowering down three, four seconds. And then you're going to push back up from the top leg. But we're trying to limit that bottom leg that's sliding down from like hitting the ground and like actually pushing up. Yeah. And so we're learning how to hinge. Flex the toes, right? Yeah, so just the, the heel toe, hits. Just the heel hits. Just the heel. I don't want any midfoot. Heel taps and then you push off that yeah, top that, leg again. It's amazing how much more infinitely difficult it makes it when you just flex that foot. You're like, I hate this. Why yes. am I doing this? But you're that even the flex foot is like, okay, I'm learning. You almost think when you flex that foot, you get some interior tip work there, uh -huh. which is good for sprinting and running. You, don't, you get a little more quad flexion there because you're almost trying to think you're trying to keep your leg straight. And when you're keeping the leg straight, now your hip flexor comes to play in part two and your abs too. So everything on that Man. chain comes into play. Look at and T you, dropping that knowledge. Boom, boom. What is that? C what is that C acronym you got? Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah, it CSCS? Yes, yes, yes. All right. So it's like, but doing all those things, like you need to get stronger legs. You can't just like, all right, I'm going to, do a hinge pattern and or a squat pattern but if you're trying to do it without squatting well then you have to build up all those other areas as well to gain some strength I so think. that anterior sequence of the quads yes. tibialis and like even into the trunk yes posterior chain glutes glutes hamstrings, calves hamstrings back, yeah all that all fun that stuff. stuff so give me some exercises that where i can lift weights and hit those areas where am i going i think you go heavy rdls you love yourself some RDLs. I love RDLs. I think RDLs like they put hair on your chest because you Man. have to you have to really like squeeze your upper back really tight. Make sure you're holding your your trunk in a good position, mm -hmm. lowering the bar down, and I always say just below the kneecaps. I don't think going to the shins. Cause Are you a, a clean grip or a snatch grip RDL? Clean grip, snatch grip, uh, snatch grip super hard. I think, but you should do it because it's like it's difficult it, and it, it it forces a little more low back work. Um, I think it hits the hamstrings in a different way too. What is the heaviest you have ever loaded an RDL? an RDL? Probably 200 kilos. All right. I feel like that's not heavy enough though. No, for you probably not because no. I know your max numbers are way heavier than mine, and we're in the same ballpark as he the heaviest I have ever loaded an RDL snatch grip is in that neighborhood. Really? Yeah. 180. Yeah. 180 snatch grip RDL. I tried it. How many reps? I, I think I hit it for five, oh, that's and insane. I paid the price for weeks. Yeah. I remember going to squat the next day, and I'm like, I can't keep my trunk. Like, yeah. I can't. I Tore was, everything up. I was just, I think I was just trying to, I think I wanted to flex on someone yeah. who didn't even know I was trying to flex on them. Yeah. I think they just said you couldn't do it, and I was like, all right, watch me. Yeah. So you uh, did it anyway. Yeah. And, it was, and then you paid for it. Yeah. I mean, you live and learn. YOLO, right? It was fun. I think it's worth it. I and, would try that. And no one cared. Like, no one videoed it. It was just. Oh, no video? It, yeah, no. It was just me doing it because someone said I couldn't. So I was like, I'll try it. Ego. <laughs> nice. I like it. Yeah. Um, th That was younger. Yeah. Younger Earl. Like, not not 40. Not in their fifth decade of living, Earl. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, You so love you some RDLs. I like so. RDLs. Um, I'm surprised with the clean grip, though. I, I, just, like, I just like clean group. I don't yeah. know. You have like, you do have like shark fin lats. Like you, they're kind of, you there. got wings. Like, yeah, they're, so I, I would think like you'd be cool with the snatch grip. Like, I don't mind snatch grip. I think one thing is like, if you don't have good grip strength, then the snatch grip is harder. Yeah. Well, then you but just use wraps then. Yeah. You, you just get use straps. That's yeah. true. That's, yeah, that's what I think. There's a way around. I it. just, I mean, I'm just like, if you just go brute strength, let's just try to like hammer it. All you right. Know? So you gave me RDLs. What else am I doing? I, can't I would squat. You can't squat. Still want strong legs. I mean, you can stick with the posterior. Good morning is always a good one. That's an easy one though. Um, what else? Mm. What about something? Where I, I can't, I don't necessarily need to load it. And Nordic? It, yeah. Nordic hamstring curl? Yeah. That's but, a good one. That one is like, it doesn't, I mean, you're not going to get as much quad in there, but the hamstrings and the low back, like, you will get strong legs doing Nordic hamstring curls. What else could I do? Like, could I, what could I do on a glute ham machine? 
What are some um, exercises I could do there? We can go glute ham raises, glute ham extensions. You can do reverse hypers on a, if you turn the opposite way. Uh -huh. You can do body weight reverse hypers on the GHD. Mm, I think those are like the main ones that I would say. I can't believe you forgot Dane's like favorite glute ham movement. What's Dane's favorite glute I ham? I think it's the razor curl. Like, Oh my gosh, yeah. He loves that one. He does love like the razor, yeah. Razor curls on a GHD are like, OD. Do you do with your athletes? You have much. So if T has developed some elite athletes yes. through GS, like don't get me wrong, but T deals with a lot of the like 13 to thir 17. Yeah. He deals with a lot of kids with big dreams. Yeah. Um, Dane gets a lot of the elite. He gets the, the creme de, yeah. de la creme, like just perspective do you do any like single leg work like the sprinter glute hand with them at all i do do that yeah all right i like it with wrestlers a lot okay explain that to me why I you like that with wrestlers with wrestlers just because they get in their their scrums and different wrestling things where they're on one leg and they sometimes they're bouncing on one leg or you know the opposite direction where they're going to pull forward or backwards and i just think being able to have that hamstring glute low back control on one leg and being able to move your body weight in space like that, mm -hmm. I think is really good. So I like the sprinter glute ham a lot. You do you do it with the bent knee too, or do you do it with the straight leg? I'll go straight knee, straight leg, All straight right. leg. I like straight leg. I think it just elongates the hamstrings, puts a little more stress on the hamstring doing that, and so I, I like the straight uh -huh. leg a little more. Do you have any athletes who struggle more with the bent versus the straight? I I not really. I think a lot of athletes they initially start with the bent knee, and that's where they're like, they want to do that, and then I'm like, straighten your leg out. And the issue half the time is just trust that they're not going to fall. <laughs> yeah. That. They're not going to fall out of the GHD. And so they're like, they bend their knee. And I'm like, okay, you'll be fine. Look, your foot's locked in. I'll try to move them. They can't move. So I'm like, straighten your leg out. And now they're like, oh, wow, I feel this more in my hamstring and my back. So I don't have any issues with, like, the bent knee. I think it's always a straight leg. All right. I was just like curious, harder. like, if maybe it activates different or something like that. And I, the bent knee, I think they, they sometimes they flail more with, the up their like trunk will move more uh -huh. just because it's they just part of its safety but then again it's just like they don't necessarily understand how to contract the glutes with the hamstring okay you know in that that same way or co-contraction style so it's like that's what they're, they're will you load to. that movement up every now and then but very rarely depends on the size of the athlete and how strong they are okay yeah it's just i want to see can't because i'll even do it with tempo wise like, are right, you going to come up pause for a second and then slowly come back down do you front load it or do you like i front yeah I'd front load barbell it. on the back and like no nah, I'd, I'd start with a plate first okay plate first and then if like i said if they come really advanced and we'll throw a bar on their back the only this is me talking again the only thing i hate about the bar on the back is you need someone to help to you to help you yeah because it's not especially it's like when you get strong enough to do the bar on the back yeah like you can't like do a pull up with it while you're in the GHD. No, get yeah. it on your back and do it. Like you, you need someone to put it there. To put it there, yeah, It's tough. By yeah, yourself. you um, know, t you know, you've been there. I've been there. You've loaded done it that. up. I've done all those things. What's the heaviest you ever loaded it? What it's you not crazy heavy, like ten kilos on each side. It's it's. Oh not my much. goodness, that's kind of weak. Yeah, but you, I think I haven't done it very often. But I've done it before. Yeah. So I, I don't really have like a. I feel like you're passive with loading part. weights, like. Every now and then. Do you know where you're at on the athlete reactive analysis? Do you know how you're? Oh, based off of like my. Uh, yeah. Are you labeled? Are you Zen? Are you, are you social? I, or are you exuberant? Do you know which one you're labeled? I would say I'm exuberant. That's your self analysis. That's my self analysis. Dane might say otherwise. I'm going to ask Dane. Dane will probably. I, too. I also think there's hybrids. I think there's. It's hard to see because I think there's like when I'm coaching, I'm like, OK, I might have a Zen kid. I might have a social kid, an exuberant kid, whatever it is. Uh -huh. But I'm like, sometimes my the Zen kid hits up huge PR and then they lose it. They, like, they're exuberant they're, out over They're it. super yeah. exuberant, you know? Or like the social kid is one day they're just like locked in and they're just in that day. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's. Well, that's kind of the social thing. They can. Yeah, they, they can. They can yo-yo back and yo -yo forth. Back and that's forth. true. But I, I would say like for my own personal, I'd be exuberant. All right. So I like to like bring some energy, bring some juice. I'll take your word on it. Thank you. All right. So we've been crushing posterior, posterior chain chains. mainly hamstring exercises yeah. you got any glute ones in there before we move on to mm. the other side of the body for strong legs glute stuff uh i mean i always say you just do i mean this is an easy one but i just think like you put a band around your knees uh-huh and you sit on a, or like a heavy band 
more, maybe two bands around your knees and you sit on a bench, have your feet at, or knees at 90 degrees and you just do like adduction, like clamshell clam type shells, of things. Yeah. Standing cl- or sitting clamshells. Um, I think a hard one is a banded side plank raise. So you're in a side plank, feet are straight. You put a band around the around the ankles, and you raise that leg up. Yeah. Pause for a second, bring it back down. That's a tough one. That's Hits brutal. Hits the glutes really good, but also some trunk control. Um, what, what else? What's your feeling on like hip thrust and like glute bridges? I don't mind them. I think they're solid. Yeah. I think they're solid. Like, Elaborate for me. Like, I, I think it depends on how you execute it. So, in the sense of like, are you fully extending the hips at the top? Do you pause? Are you, you pausing? Are you doing like, you know, almost like you, a pulse action? Yeah. Or are you like fully lengthening at the bottom and then coming back up? Like, how are you, you know, executing the movement? All right. Here's a question. I do like them though. For that strong it, legs would be good too. That is going to very much form my opinion on you. Oh, geez. All right. Let's see what I got. Is there a world in which you use them as an absolute strength movement? No. All right, good. No, now we, we can still be friends. Yeah, no. You can't. Like, I don't think. I mean, it's it's you. Not as an absolute strength movement. I think they're always. You can be, go heavy. Don't you can go me. heavy, but it's like, all right, we're gonna do a warm up and then some technical coordination work and then go in the hip thrust. No. I, yeah, I, yeah. I can see it. I can no, see it. Uh, yeah, you can load it up. Accessory hypertrophy work. Yeah, and it's it's, it's even best as hypertrophy work. Like. I think you just do do it for 12 to 17 reps. Or if you want to go really heavy, maybe drop down to five to six. But like even eight too. even eight. But like you're going like a heavy triple. I, I haven't really seen that before. My own like, personal experiment. And I may like my reps may have not been like technically the sound like it's more like where yeah. you're going. But I'm pretty sure at like my deadlift, I could hit for like five to eight reps of it. Like the one. Your yeah. one rep max deadlift. Yeah. Dang. I think is about what it was like just yeah. goofing around with stuff. And I don't have a strong, strong deadlift. deadlift. That looks like not a bad exercise for strong legs. So. Oh yeah. But just a concentric. There's no eccentric. Yeah. You can just drop it. Yeah, just like, drop it's it over. Top. Yeah. It's over. A lot of Shawnee. Athletes do that. Yeah. A lot of athletes do that. <laughs> All right. Let's flip sides. Let's go with the anterior sequence. Yeah. Tell me about how I get strong quads and I can't squat. You can't squat? Well, I feel like leg extensions are always going to be there. But my knees are going to hurt, everyone oh, says. Well, That's what I hear. Let's just make sure you're sitting. The the, the back part of the seat yeah. isn't too far back or too far forward. My like, knees have never hurt from doing leg extensions ever. Really? That's a good thing. Never. Shout out to you and your I, knees. I, I don't think I, so. I think it's also like, are your quads, like, are your VMO strong? Like, can you act can you like keep your your feet and your your legs like straight over your toes or over your knees like when you raise your legs up are you moving your toes out or anything like all those little things i think play a part with how you know contractually your your quads are moving like if you point your toes in point your toes out toes forward like that can play a part with knee pain so it's like yeah let's just see how you're moving that way um but i think leg extension is always going to be a good one you have to put those, those in there they're like they're like top tier leg or quad development movements what else can i do with my quads i can't squat you can't squat do i have do i have to rely can on I, machines can i count a leg press in there that's not a squat you can count yeah that. i think i'm counting the leg press i'm not gonna put i can't say hack squat but i can say leg press Ooh, I, want. I feel like the hack squat though it is a squat can definitely like leg press like you could do it you could do it you'd count it i yeah, mean i think you can't go into like a deep squat on a hack squat though yeah like, it, 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 all right it does have the worst it, squat it has it. squat in there like I don't, I don't think we should count it we're I, pushing too much you can count leg press like what about the hack lift do you know what i'm talking is about that the one where it's like where you elevate your heels okay and then you basically do a deadlift with the bar behind your Ooh, body i've seen that before yeah oh my goodness that's a good one yeah. I, I think so. I think that's solid. I'd like that. I want to. You want to talk about a movement that like just blows up Lights your up quads, like quads, and yeah. it, in some weird way because maybe it's just your trunk too, like yeah, because you're just in a weird position, like yeah, not doing a carry, but like holding something. It yeah. just hits you in ways you didn't know. You didn't know it would hit you. Yeah, in. yeah. I like that one. What'd you call it? Uh, I think it's called a hack lift. Hag lift? Hack. Hack like, lift? Almost like a hack squat. It's, okay. But it, yeah, but it's it, called a hack lift. Okay. I think that's what it's called. I think that's what Dane told me it was called. I feel I like at some one. point I thought it was a hack squat. Like, yeah. 
but it's like I don't have a hack machine. I'm yeah. gonna do this. So let's like, do this. Yeah. I like it. Um can't squat. Can't squat. I would I want to say walking lunges, but I don't know if you count that or not. Yeah. I think walking lunges whether that's like hands by your head or loaded with dumbbells like that's that's a rough one. It's a good one though. Like it's it hits the quads, hits the glutes. Um hits your trunk trying to stay upright like i think that would be a really really good one and the coordination aspect of it too yeah man i'm trying to see i wrote some things down here what about seated calf raises seated calf raises are good i like doing that one a lot i have some of the um older clients we have and i'll have them grab dumbbells mm -hmm. just put the dumbbells on their knees and go like two second pause seated oh. calf raise back down up back down and then i'll pair that with um, standing tib raises, so hit the front and the back of oh, the calf. That's a rough brutal. One. Oh, it's terrible. Do you, with the standing one, you don't have to load it, do you? Mm -mm. No, you just stand your back against the wall, put your feet out a couple inches out in front of you, push through your heels, and you just raise those toes up. Almost always cue like big toe to the to the sky or big toe yeah. to your nose. You'll feel your anterior tib just like. Yeah, slide I'm just up. doing that right now. Yeah, you'll feel. I it. feel like my tib tibialis is stronger than my actual calves. Sometimes I. I'm making that up. Like. Well, that's it. That'd be wild. I mean, that's really cool. But I mean, yeah. you're a runner. You did run for a while, right? Um, I like for a few months and I was like, this is the most painful thing I've ever done in my life. I think I overdid my volume and probably had like stress fractures in my feet and just oh. powered through because like, you just I'm a dummy. That, you got that dog. Yeah. Man. I, I don't know if that's that. It, <laughs> it's just like a lack of intelligence sometimes. Like, oh, look how tough I am. And Ooh, I I'm not even trying Jesus. to be tough. It's just like, hey, I'm going to show up. I said yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's like a, this may be a bad comparison, but Anton Chigurh in yeah. the movie No Country for Old Men is like, okay. he's like that. I don't know if he's the antagonist, but he's definitely like a villainous character in it. Okay. But the thing about the character is like he has a moral code. Yeah. It may be skewed, it may be weird, but he has a code. Okay. And he's very, like, almost a zealot to the code. Yeah. I have moments where when it comes to exercising, I will have that mindset. Like, you plan to do that this week. You're going to get it done, hell or high water. Like, yeah. And I will maneuver things and schedules. And not just exercise, like, plans or, like, tasks or things things i committed to people or things i said to people like i will work in that way yeah i don't know that's just so i was run i was i had these goals these dates i set them out um it was going to get to this and it was going to happen whether i Wanted. might have had stress fractures in my feet or didn't yeah you just did it yeah just planning I never went to a doctor so it's just i could be making it up you oh. know there's no proof Dang. no scientific no imaging you just felt pain yeah, my feet just hurt when I woke up in the morning. Mm. My feet, my knees, or my body never hurt like that after lifting. Like, yeah. Muscles were tight, but it's like you can, I could go lift and be like, oh, I don't feel a thing. Yeah. Dang. I don't know. Well, yeah. I respect that. Yeah. I should have got, you should have probably got that. Probably should have got thicker. Uh, Four insoles, yeah. Yeah. Run those, where are those, uh, those hokas? I should have just sprinted and got stronger legs. That I mean, if that's what you're really looking to yeah. do, like, I mean. All right, let me see. All right. I think we covered it, right? I, think so. I feel like if you can't squat, go do plyos. Yeah. Go sprint. And hey, here's a bunch of like accessory type movements. Yeah. Leg press. Use that glute ham developer. Yes. Leg extensions, machines. Machines. Yeah. Machines are like a big one for you. And target those legs. Like yeah. I don't know. This Nordic is a random curls. thought. Make it happen. I was just thinking about another self done experiment. All right, I um, want to hear it. <laughs> uh, doing, I, I like lab rat. Doing um, the assault bike, but raising. No, I'm sorry, not raising it. Lowering the seat a little bit because there's always like you should have it like at a certain height and yeah. you know, make sure you're not fully locking out the bottom. But like, raise lowering the seat down a little bit to where you have a little more knee flexion at the uh -huh. bottom, and trying to keep it at a higher intensity. In terms so of a certain RPMs. wattage, yeah, like, a certain or, wattage or RPMs, whatever. Like, I remember I did that. Like I said, self-assessment. I did that for 12 weeks, maybe like last off season, uh -huh. just to like just get some extra calories and build a little work capacity. And I always had like sore knees, but I did that for those 12 weeks and I had no knee pain really okay. at all. So basically just having your quads 
quads. Blood just pumping. Blood pumping. Probably building up your mitochondrial volume or yep. whatever they're saying with and it. The and density and all that stuff. It was helping out there. Yes. So I was like, I mean, and even then, like, during um, some squatting movements or lunges or, you know, anything that was unilateral or like a side caustic squat, whatever it is, like, I just felt a little bit stronger at the deep, deeper knee flexion movement yeah. at the bottom. So, like. That could be something to think and about. You have to work on ankle mobility still. Hundred yeah. percent. All right. Who doesn't? I mean, there's people out there that don't. But like, Jake doesn't. Jake doesn't. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that's true. But if Jake's under two hundred pounds, is that is that the difference? I think so. he doesn't have those American Girl he's, doll ankles. Yeah, he's got like. <laughs> he's not that triple C thick like. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. There it so is. Like, I brought it back. <laughs> <laughs> it had to come back. Yeah. If I'm on here, I'm bringing it up. Yeah, all the so time. So it's like if if you if you need ankle mobility, like if you're Yo, if anyone's still listening into this, just you, looking ahead, there's like a athletic physique thing we got going on on the one thing, and I talked about like the, I threw the triple C thick in there too. Yeah, like, <laughs> be ready. I'm telling you, we got to figure out how we can get that into a um, just like a one-off limited edition shirt or something. Like, I think Avon's the man. Avon is the right? man, and I know he would be down for it. Yeah. So I need to talk to him about that. I think it needs to happen. You ready? You ready for um? Overrated, underrated. Yes, I've been thinking about this all, all right. day, so let's do it. Overrated, underrated. Leg curls. Underrated. Underrated. Oh, wow. I think it's... leg curls, you can, one, load them up, or you go slow eccentric leg curl for multiple reps, like over eight to ten reps, you will be questioning your life. Yeah. And you have to keep yourself accountable while doing it. Some people are like, oh, I can just go lighter and just rip them out like 20 reps. No. You go slow eccentric leg curls for a set of 10, five seconds down with like a fairly heavy weight, you'll feel like you're doing an order curl. All right. 100%. Next question. I, w- I want to follow up with this. Unilateral or, or bilateral with the movement then too? For the, the, the leg curl. The leg curl. Bilateral. Okay. Bilateral. Just keep it because if you go unilateral, it's you'll be done for. So It'll just, just crush your leg. crush you. So do bilateral. All keep right. Keep yourself a... Like Can I do the 20 reps unilateral then, like as a burner to finish? 100%. You should do that. All right. I like this idea of doing 100%. leg curls, do like you, your sets of 10, slow eccentric, feel yep. like the Nordic, and then do a drop set, drop set. unilateral, and just Rip hammer them. them. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Overrated, underrated. GHD machines. Mm, they're not overrated, so I, I have to say underrated. Underrated? Yeah. they. You can do a lot of good work on a GHD. And I think the biggest one I found is doing – so when I'm teaching I, – I coach 13- to 17-year-olds. That's my main thing. So I don't have them go reverse hypers right away. I'll have them go on the GHD, and instead of being inside, they'll just flip the opposite direction, uh-huh. hold on to the back plate, and then – do reverse hypers that way. Just learn how to engage learn the muscles. Learn how to engage the muscles. I want you to hold for three seconds. I need to feel your low back. You can obviously see their glutes and hamstrings are contracted. Yeah. And the feet are pointed down. They're not like just flailing out wide. So I think that's a good one there. Um, and why, do you, why the feet pointed down and not out wide? Like Not out wide. Because I sometimes you, when their feet are out wider, you can't. they're not necessarily squeezing the hamstrings as much, I think. So like when their feet are together, you really force okay. them to keep everything in line and in a straight line. You know, so, so there's it's a specific visual cue you get mm-hmm. that a muscle is probably not being engaged properly yeah. as well. Yeah, because you can at. just flail and it's not as necessary. All right. So. Overrated, underrated hip thrust machines. Overrated. Right. You don't need those. <laughs> they're, they look, I mean, they're cool. They're great. A great thing. To Makes use. it so much easier, Makes right? It easier to load, <laughs> easier to set up. But like just you don't it's just not, buy that pad in the barbell. Yeah. Like. I get it. The barbell itself, like, yeah, dig into be your rough. hips. That's hard. Yeah, put a pad there. Get but the pad, like a whole machine for it. Like, it depends on where you work, who you're working with. I will say that. Like, yeah. you know, if you're in a certain gym, that what's the clientele? Yeah, what's the clientele? What's the goals? Maybe it's necessary, but like, maybe they use it as an absolute strength movement. Maybe they decide to do, you know, yeah. five sets of three heavy hip thrusts, and then or something like that. I wonder what that would be like. I mean, max hip thrust one rep max it's it, it, i almost feel like you'd get the same looks as like you go to like a public gym and you see those guys loading up like fifteen thousand pounds or something on a leg press and it's like why do you have all the 45s in the gym like what's the point of that yeah so now we got these heavy hip thrusts and you're doing sets of four or three and you have 800 pounds on it like what's going on there okay can you squat like four or five at all i don't know okay this is an either or one okay this one isn't that fun 
but it's exercise related. It's not yeah. like pop culture related. I apologize. That's okay. Um, for athletic development, so we're working with athletes. Which is the better exercise, the glute bridge or the hip thrust? And if you need me to differentiate, when I think of glute bridge, I think of like your back is on the floor and you're doing like a glute bridge. The hip thrust is when your back's like on a bench and then you're thrusting. Because the movement's very similar. It's just where your back is. Where your back is. I like the glute bridge more. Okay. And I think just because it, you're a little bit lower on the ground or you're on the ground. And then, so the doing that, you have to fully get the hips to fully extend. And I want to see like a, almost like a straight line from like your trunk through yeah. your, your quads to the knee. So I like the glute bridge a little more over the hip thrusts. Now, my next question is, what do you do with the people where you see like almost like a hill? From like their... Like they hit the glute bridge and like you say you want to see the straight line, right? Yeah. Like from basically knee down to like mm-hmm. the shoulders, like the torso, it goes straight. Yeah. What about the people who flex their like glutes and it ends up like almost you get like a little bump yeah see that's that's the those are the kids or the the athletes i think you do slowly try to transition into like that maybe you raise them up to like a to the bench like a hip thrust almost Uh uh-huh so you can kind of alleviate some of that bump action and we can get the full you know hamstring and everything contracted okay all right plyos speed work we talked about all that audience questions Let's do it. So if you if you're listening and you're not a member of our Discord or subreddit, like go join up for that and do that. You know, like subscribe to the channel. All that fun stuff. Download the Peak Strength app. Yep. Use it. Great programming. I think there's updates coming around. Yes. May have come already too. I may be hinting at things too early. I may be late. I don't have the release schedule like right in my brain right now. Um uh this one's from Discord. Um Keist. Keist is very active in the Discord. Nice. I've had conversate like keyboard conversations. Back and forth with yeah. Keist. Shout yeah. out Keist. Um, how's the atmosphere in the gym when Dane is there compared to when he is out coaching at major tournaments? I feel like that one was that one I think was just for this episode. Because yeah. I did post. I, I haven't looked at it. I was like, hey, Dane's away. I'm doing the podcast with T. You have any questions specifically for him? So Keith, thank you. One. That's a good one. What's it like? How's the gym when Dane's here versus him not being here? Yeah, when he's off and away at the competition. Okay, so when he's here, this is weird. I didn't feel weird saying it like this, but like <laughs> when Dane's around, everybody's like, you're always locked in. You know, you never know like when Dane's going to be looking at something or like critiquing anything. Like, you know, he's seen so many athletes, um, you know, he's seen at all different levels. So he's always like, there's always times where I'll be coaching or a legend and I will be down coaching. He'll just walk through and be like, Hey, remember that one kid that was over there doing X exercise? Like, did you see that? And we are like, Oh no, I didn't. But I, now I remember to make sure I look at that. So he's always like looking at something and everybody always wants to talk to him. Dane is a bird of prey when he's coaching. He sees everything. Yeah. Everything. And I think that's one of the best skills that I've learned from him is like, he notices everything and always like constantly seeing things. So that is a good thing. Dane is hyper vigilant. Yeah. Like Dane would make a great um like guard. Like you if you were out camping and like military like some combat. Yeah. You gotta hold Dane hands would hold, be the, the good the person to be like look yeah. out. Look out. First watch or yeah. something like that. Or like like that middle of the night watch and everyone wants to sleep and yeah. he'd, he'd see all that. He'd, um, he'd hold the door. <laughs> <laughs> he would. Um, but, yeah, when he's here, it's just like everybody's always locked in. Like, you always try to focus on the little things. Um, you always try to cr- – you can crack jokes with him, too. But yeah, it's he, he does have a good sense of humor. He has a good sense of humor. Um, when he's not here, I think I try to think of little things when I do, like, that he would notice. So, like, if I'm coaching or, like, you know, just cleaning things up, like – the vibes are different because it's like, oh, man, Dane's not here. Like, I feel like it's almost not the same. Like, the same amount of athletes don't show up all the time. Uh-huh. But, you know, it's – you know, we still have to do our job. We still have to coach and things like that. So, it's a little different. Like, obviously, we don't get coaching during that time when he's gone. Uh-huh. But um, there's a lot more tripods out, that's for sure, because everybody's recording one to send <laughs> stuff to him. Um, but that's probably, like, the biggest thing. Um, when, he's, when he's here, it's just like Dane's here. Like, big dog's here. I like to mess with him about that. So, it's like everybody wants to talk to him. 
you want to make sure you're on your P's and Q's. And then when he's not here, you're just like, all right, let's try to uphold the same thing as if he was here, the standard. I like so. the idea around the tripods are out when he's gone. Oh, yeah, the tripods, <laughs> tripods come out when Dane is gone. Everyone wants to film everything. Everybody, <laughs> everything's filmed. It's like record from this angle, record from that angle, record warm-ups, record accessories. Is this right? Is that right? Or is this not right? Like, man, it's crazy. Tripods go. We run through tripods at this place just nice. because of that reason. All right, this one is Dielper Dipper Eleven. This is from Reddit. Is there any known athletic benefit to concentrics done in the ten to thirty second range? Anecdotally, I've experimented with thirty second eccentric concentric concentric compound movements for warm ups and burnouts. I feel at times this primes my CNS and will actually allow me to move weight faster and follow up sets. However, I feel if this type of movement pattern was truly and uniquely beneficial, more people would be talking about it. Should anyone add the slow type of lifts into their program? That's a, doing that long of he's eating centric is like, yeah, it's like glacier, but he's, it says concentric and eccentric. And initially it talks about concentric Concentric. And that's, that's what threw me off a little bit. At yeah. First. It's like a 30 second concentric, which I mean, I, you couldn't, you couldn't, that's not sprinting because there's a centric load there too. It's, I don't know. I mean, how do you move something concentrically for that long of a period of time yeah, without going fast? What are, what are you trying to do? Work yeah, the positions? Is, yeah. Uh, like if I could see it from a technique maybe standpoint. Yeah. And the idea of using it for a warm up doesn't seem like off, like completely no. off base. I don't. It may not necessarily be the best use of your time. Yeah. And if it's working for the person too, like they're saying they feel they then move faster through the slow, maybe the muscles like just thinking through it, they spending more time in the position there, like the body becomes more aware of the position. Yes. So to say, cause I do know like GSPD, like time to centrics is a thing. Yes. 100%. Like it is used very often like yeah. especially hey we want more time under tension we're gonna time our eccentrics like it happens yeah um concentrically not so much because like yeah. you want to move fast like yeah. it, it's more sport training like mm -hmm. hey we're gonna practice moving fast um but i also too know like we don't throw everything out like try to experiment see where it is yeah but, I think if, if I if he would have with that question, like I'd love to see that again in terms of like what exercise are you using that with? Like, yeah, and that that would give you a little bit of a better picture. Like, are you using it with a bench press or are you using it with a squat? Are yeah. you using it with like a leg extension, like yeah. a curl? Like, where is it? Yeah, happening? where is it being done? And then I think that would be better. Because my thought is, from like the GSPD system, isometrics would probably be better. Yes, to get that same thing. Yeah. Um in those positions and i know having talked to dane he already said like pauses in the concentrics are a bunch of like it's garbage don't yeah. do it yeah I've like he's like lot, yeah. don't pause it with a quarter like at a quarter squat on the way up like no. just finish the lift finish you're gonna right pause away. you pause in the hole way down yeah um so i don't know if that was what you wanted delper yeah. 11 but that's the best we got for you today yeah um anything else you want to say about squatting without a or getting strong with that strong legs without squatting. <laughs> I think that we covered a lot of things. How, how do we do? Oh, we talked a while. So if you're yeah. still listening, thank you. Thank we you. Appreciate yes, it. we definitely 100% um, appreciate you. Hopefully we got some good information in there that you can yeah. take along. And if you don't want to squat, you can do those other yeah. lifts. You can go run, jump, and do train well. almost like a bodybuilder. Yeah. All right. Do you want to do Dane's piece? You did it last time. I did? Oh, yeah. yeah um cultivate your power always all right guys well we always need to if you want to become a freak you always must cultivate your power peace Wiener.